This is the second part of the discussion of convergences of measurable functions. And uh, in the previous part, we discussed, we actually discovered that uniform convergence impl impl implies pointwise convergence, which in turn implies convergence almost everywhere. And this one finally implies the convergence in measure topology. This one I will call A, this one I will call B, this one I will call C. In these short comments, we will show that uh, none of these implications can be reversed. We will show this by simple examples. So, to see that the implication A cannot be reversed, the good example is this kind of functions. Uh, that's a sequence of functions which converges to zero pointwise. Yes, pointwise. Although I said here almost everywhere, in fact, it is actually pointwise. It is actually pointwise. Is the typical choices, uh, just a few representatives of this sequence in here. F and X. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, if you try to test this sequence for uniform convergence, so if you try to compute the supremum of the differences of Fn and the limit function, which is zero, the supremum will be one half, which shows to us that there is no uniform convergence. This supremum we compute it in a regular form, we just compute the derivative of the function, which is this one. If you equate this derivative to zero, uh, you will have these solutions. So the supremum of this function, in fact, is attained in these two points. And if you just plug these points in here, you will have one half. And that's why you don't have the uniform convergence, although you have a pointwise or pointwise convergence. Uh, if you want to disprove the reversal of the implication B, that's the very easy thing. I just uh, suggest we choose the function like this. That's the indicator of the interval 0, 1, and n. Now, obviously, the limit of this indicator is just the indicator of one single point, point 0. So we see that my function converges to 0 almost everywhere. Right? The only point where we don't have convergence is the point 0, which is of measure 0. Uh, on the other hand, we don't have the pointwise convergence to zero everywhere. Now, the hardest, of course, uh, the hardest in these comments is the disproving that this implication cannot be reversed. This is a rather hard construction. Uh, rather, sorry, it's rather difficult construction. So we consider the functions g, which are indexed with two indices, k and j, and which are simply the indicators of the intervals like this where k, uh, any integer, 1, 2, and so on, and j is the integer between 1 and k. So basically, uh, for every k, we split the interval 0, 1 into k equal disjoint subintervals. And each of them we index with the letter j. Right. Uh, what I claim is this. If I have an integer, n, 1, 2, and so on, then for such integer I can always find a k, which is another integer, such that my original n sits between these two numbers. This is the arithmetic progression of... This is a sum of the arithmetic progression from 1 to k take 1. This is a sum of the same progression, but with one extra term k. In fact, we know the formula for the sum. This left side of the inequality equal to this, right side of the inequality equal to this. Um, right, so every, for every n you can find such k because this is a growing sequence. Oh, this is a growing sequence for k, so they like split the interval into subintervals. n will be in one of those subintervals, one and only one of those subintervals. Now, j, if I set j like this and take the left hand side here, then the j will be integer between 1 and n because, like I said, the difference between these two numbers is k. Now, I'll define my sequence now, fn, to be, so for every integer n, I can find a couple of numbers k and j, 
and that's the scheme. Uh, that's the method which I use to find these couple of numbers. So fn will be now g kj in fact kj in fact for the kj associated with this n according to this method. Now I claim a few things. If I ask the question what will be the set where the absolute of this fn bigger than, than epsilon, I would need to give you two answers here. It will be empty set if my epsilon bigger than 1 and it will be the set akj where kj is a couple associated with this n if epsilon less or equal than 1. Now I also observe that the measure of this set now will be less than 1 on k because that will be the largest of these two sets is this one and the measure of this one, the length of this set is just 1 on k. Now by observing that when n goes to the infinity your k constructed with, which is connected with n with this via this double inequality will also go to the infinity. This observation concludes that actually the f of n goes to zero with respect to the measure topology because this thing will go to zero with respect to the, no, will go to zero. Now on the other hand, I claim that if I have any number between zero and one, and if I have any k bigger or equal than one, then because remember these ones for fixed k, this is just a splitting of the zero one interval into the equal subintervals of length 1 on k. So there will be one of these intervals which will have this point x in it. So there is one j such that x will be in, in this akj only. And so if you take the number n associated with this couple numbers k and j, then the f at this point will be 1. fn for this n at this point will be 1. Now again, I emphasize that and n actually that's the connection between n and and the couple kj. So look at this. Uh, I just found a subsequence. That's the subsequence. For every x, I found a subsequence, right? By pushing this k to the infinity, this n will also go to the infinity. You have infinitely many, infinitely many of n's like that. We found a subsequence where f uh, always takes value, fn sequence always takes values 1, which means that for every x in here, this sequence of numbers does not converge to zero. And that means that the function doesn't converge to zero almost everywhere. Because we have we found the, the whole interval of non-zero measure such that every point of that interval is the point of divergence from my sequence. 